Hey YouTube fam and friends, it is April 20th, 2023, and tonight I felt led to do prayer time about forgiveness. Forgiveness um, can be difficult to do due to, of course, different reasons that we would be needing to forgive someone. However, it not is just for freeing the person or people that you are releasing. It's actually a release to self. It's so that you yourself can be best in healing. It's so that you yourself can let go and truly embrace joy and heal and turn negativity into optimism. Because there are people who don't forgive, they hold grudges and it becomes weight on the soul and the spirit and it can lead to other unhealthy matters such as an emotional snappiness. It can lead to um, getting sick, the stressors, the anxiety, the worry, even fears. But when you completely forgive and let go, there's freedom in that. And so you're in fact actually doing it for you. And another reason to forgive is because God asks us, wants us, desires us, and actually needs us to forgive. In the Our Father prayer, it talks about forgiveness. And so I'll start with the Our Father prayer. And it says, you know, God forgives us as we forgive others. And nobody is perfect and we're all sinners. And we definitely want our Lord, our God, to forgive us. And so it's self-serving as well as freeing to let go and release to another individual. And I'm all about being real. And so... And God would know if you're fake. And so if you're holding on to anger and bitterness and you're finding it really hard to forgive someone or people for certain situations, God knows. And you can say, God, I know I'm supposed to ha forgive. I'm having a hard time forgiving. Please help me forgive. I release it to you to aid in the forgiveness. And that step will be honored. So I'll start with the Our Father prayer. And it's Our Father. If you'd love to pray along, that's great if you know it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive others. And lead us not into temptation, <clears throat> but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the honor is yours now and forever. Amen. And what's beautiful about the Our Father prayer is there's so many different prayers in the Christian faith. Some are individual and some are known by denomination. My understanding, unless I was taught incorrectly, is that the Our Father prayer is universal in the different denominations of Christianity. So it's a joining prayer that bridges all of our us Christians together, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I know that some sins seem unforgivable. Um, and Jesus came with his blood as a living sacrifice to cover our sins. And he will know if the person you're freeing, or maybe here you're also asking God to forgive you. And if you're asking God to forgive you, he will know your heart and know if you were truly sorry. 
And there's an action that comes. It's forgiveness and it's repentance. So it's turning away from the action or the behavior. Let's say you're someone, for example, who struggles with honesty. And you're like, God, please forgive me. And so he will know if you're truly sorry for being dishonest. And then you work on yourself to become an honest person, to become a person that doesn't fib or tell grandiose lies. Let's say you're someone who has a sin of self-infliction, self-harm. You know, God wants us to love others as we love ourselves. If we are not loving ourselves, how can we properly love others? You know, the greatest command is to love God with all your heart, and then it's to love others as you love yourself. And self-harm, self-injury is a sin unto yourself. So he will know if you're truly repentant, and then you stop the behavior leading to the self-injury. And let's say the self-injury behavior, if I'm remembering it correctly from my training, I think it's called emu, where you self-injure yourself and slice. And it's coming from a deep root of trauma, and you self-injure to feel pain to feel because you've gone so much tra- through so much trauma and you're numb and you actually bleed out because to you that means life and living and to feel. And God knows why you're doing the self-injurious behavior. And you could say, God, please forgive me and help me and lead me to proper healing and proper therapy. You can even say, take this supernaturally away from me, this desire to do this. So it's asking for the forgiveness, and it's also stepping away and changing it if it's yourself. You don't also, let's say you need forgiveness from someone. Um, You don't also have to go person to person. Sometimes going to a person and asking that person for forgiveness can bring more harm. Let's say you were a violent person in someone's life. If you go to that person that you created violence upon, that actually might make the person go into PTSD. They might not be ready to see you. And so you can ask God to forgive you and release you and help the person that you damaged and that you hurt. So see, these are some examples. Um, So I'm going to go into a general prayer now that we did the Our Father. So Lord God, Jesus, I come before you and I thank you, Lord God, that you are the living sacrifice You came, Lord, with the message of being able to be redeemed through you and your blood about the forgiveness. Your blood curtain is the forgiveness, God, of having it be so we can be atoned and going through the Father. If it wasn't for your blood, Lord, we'd be living like Old Testament days and having to make sacrifice of animals uh, before being able to enter um, and to be made clean and going through other rituals. And you had your life here as the living sacrifice. I thank you, Abba Father, that you are a God that gives your people, your creations chances. You knew that in human life there would be sin. And you actually created free will out of love so that (coughs) we would not be robots. But you do not want us to be disobedient. There's free will and there's also God's will and there's sin. And sometimes, Lord, we go on to the wrong track and we do the wrong thing. I pray for every single person here that is joining me in prayer for a moment of reflection. And if you want to pause the video and turn it back on, 
Um, I'm just going to be in a silent pause for about 15 seconds, but if you need longer, feel free to pause the video as we come before you and ask for forgiveness of our sins. So, Lord, I thank you that we can come to you for any sin. You know that we are made in your image, and you want us to be the best that we can be in representing you and who you made us to be as your sons and as your daughters. Lord, I pray for every single person who came to you genuinely to be forgiven as well as to forgive someone that they will feel inside their spirit a greater peace. They will feel your mercy. They will feel a letting go. For anyone who asks for forgiveness in a certain area for him or herself, I pray that they do the repentance work. I pray, Lord God, that supernaturally people will be free from addictions, People will be free from um, self-interest behavior, from, um, I'm getting guzzle drinking, like when you just guzzle, 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 almost like beer bonging, um, only it's even more severe because I believe whoever this is for, it's not even like just going to a party to do it. You're just like chugging and you're chugging and you're chugging and you're chugging and you're drinking and you're drinking and you're drinking. So God... For the person who is doing that, um, I pray for it to stop. And I rebuke, actually, a drowning spirit in the name of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that this person shall not drown. And then I pray for this person's liver to be healthy. Lord, I do believe the wine was wine. And I know in the Bible it says um, that the first miracle was the wedding and Jesus created the wine was the first the water into wine was the first miracles however we're not meant to get drunk <laughs> we're meant to be able to enjoy those who do partake and those who abuse or are addicted should not partake and i pray for this person and i rebuke a guzzling spirit i rebuke a downing drowning spirit in the name of the father son and holy spirit amen whoever you are i pray for this freedom um I'm getting something about like a gang bust. And so whatever that is, Lord God, Jesus, I lift that up to you. And, uh, you know, mom mentality, or if you're part of a gang, you can do things you normally wouldn't do in fear, not just for wanting to be a part or go along, but sometimes you're going along and you realize, oh my goodness, you feel like you're in too deep and you can't get out and you're doing things you wouldn't normally do because of how it would be looked upon you in a peer environment. So I pray for your freedom and your safety and being able to get out and not having to go along um, or else you might feel a physical threat to yourself or your family. So Lord, I pray you send uh, safety and release and let the person have an exit out. Lord, you say that, you know, when we face temptation, that you show us a way out. So show, show this person, this individual, the way, the safe way out. I pray protection and freedom for this person of himself and his family and loved ones and let him get out of that. Let me see if there's anything else specific God would like me to give. <sighs> Getting peace and freedom and general care and well-being. <clears throat> I'm getting take heart the kindness of a living soul. Someone shuns away, shuns away, shuns away like God has been trying to speak to you. And like when goodness comes, you turn away. You're shining away. Um, so I pray for that person who's shunning. 
if the eyes need to be open to be open, but it's more like I also see like a healing of this person that needs to happen. Um, for anyone who feels they're not worthy or good enough to go before the Lord, um, that is a lie of the enemy. God made it were through Jesus and his blood. Anybody can go before the Lord um, through Jesus Christ. If you don't need Jesus Christ, you can say, God, teach me, show me. Jesus, come to me. Come to me in dreams. Let me hear your inner voice. Guide me in my walks. Let me feel your guidance in my walk. Because <laughs> a lot of times it's already there, right? <laughs> um. Yeah, let me just see if there's anything specific about forgiveness for anyone else. The chains are meant to be free and the bondages are meant to be gone. I'm getting the words begged, pardoned. There's going to be a few people who have done jail time watching this video and claim your freedom and the pardoning. You're not meant to live in the past. Learn from it and grow, and things transpire. But remember, you're made anew in me, not me, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> you're made anew in me, says the living Lord. It's time to take hope and to grow seeds. Springtime. Springtime. Hmm. I got something about a tattoo of a daisy for somebody out there. Um, don't know if that has particular meaning to somebody, but that's what I got. A tattoo of a daisy. Hmm. Okay, well... I guess I'll stop here tonight with the freedom part. For anyone who doesn't know Jesus Christ and would like to, you can say a prayer of Jesus. Or if you know him and are turning back, you can say, Jesus, show me that you're real. And I invite you into my heart. And I invite the Holy Spirit into my being. Please forgive me of all sins. Guide me on your path, Lord, restoring my relationship with Abba Father, and show me the direction, the ways, the truth in your light, God. Hmm. Yeah, he takes us by the hand and guides us like little children, you know. We can trust him and where he takes us and to guide us and love us and follow us. And Lord, anyone who said that prayer, I pray you surround them with genuine, true brothers and sisters in Christ, that they can grow and develop in their faith. I pray that they get plugged into um, wonderful opportunities to learn with you, be it a Bible study, be it a church. Um, I know there's processes development in time. Um, you know, someone might be leery about plugging into a church right away, and but there's churches have meetings Anyone's in sort of in in sort of addiction recovery, they celebrate recovery that a lot of churches do for free. Um, and what they do is they have someone go up and give a testimony, and they have worship songs and praise, and then you split into small groups. Sometimes, um, yeah, I'm trying to remember from I visited a couple different times. Um, and you, you like the think it's the women go into small groups, and then the men um, go into small groups is how if I'm remembering it. And then Alpha is part of churches if they're still doing it. If you can look up A L P H A, and usually once a week there's a potluck, and then it's a time where you can come and ask any question without judgment you know, and learn about God. And then um, at the very end, there's a retreat that you do um, and you watch videos and little fun skits and stuff. And they teach you about Christianity and Jesus and every single question is welcomed. And that is free too. So some churches might still be doing that um, to teach people about Christianity. 
Okay, um, I think there's something else I want to say. Let me just go before you if there's anything else. Hmm. Just know that God made you and you were made with a purpose. And I pray, and I believe we have purposes with an S. And I pray that whoever's listening walks into their purposes or purposes in the kingdom. All right. Good night, everybody. Take care. God bless.